students from Complutense University. My name is Shiana Sotelo and I am the coordinator of Eurasia Foundation course in Burgos University and it's a pleasure for me to be here with you even though it's virtually to share with you my research on how we can transcend quote race unquote in cross-cultural dialogues. In 1909 in Japan Tokyo, a non-governmental organization called One Asia Foundation was founded with a beautiful mission and a simple goal, to contribute to the creation of a world free from all conflicts, such as ethnicity, nation, religion, political system, and wealth inequality. In order to build such a future, it actively addresses young students around the world by founding a network of universities to contribute to the promotion of international citizens, in 2020, April, was renamed Eurasia Foundation from Asia as a step closer to achieving a world community. And the three principles of action that drive its core values are, on the one hand, the emphasis on going beyond nationality, that is, to be inclusive with people of all ethnic origins. Secondly, it is the principle of embracing freedom of thought, belief, and religion, always with a deep acknowledgement that a person's faith or religion should be highly respected at all times. Lastly, it stresses no involvement in affiliation in politics of any country in order to guarantee an impartial and objective platform for exchange and dialogue. And these three core values speak of international citizens graduating from barriers of the self of companies and organizations, frontiers in countries. But mostly, it showcases the realization that even though, quote, race, unquote, and nationality are important components for the establishment of a person identity, they're also divisive factors that must be transcended in order to become international citizens. The foundation recognizes as international citizens all human beings that are considered brothers and sisters of one human race. Um, this is really a noble mission that is anchored in the deep belief that it's possible for people to celebrate their own nationalities without deprecating those who not belong to the same ethnic group. And in this line, biology studies, in particular the field of genetics, do lend support to the ethics of universal humanity. Nevertheless, as a universal professor working with students from all nationalities, more often than not, I find myself agreeing with Anne Louise Keating's statement in, quote, investigating whiteness, I was dropping on, quote, race, unquote, that she, as she affirms in her own experience, students, quote, students of all colors view themselves as pawns in an already existing, highly racialized system that they cannot change. The impossibility of transcending human classification in the minds and hearts of young people, um, I believe necessarily leads us to pause for a moment on the deep-rooted separation between what is considered us versus what is considered them. And um, because, strikingly enough, it is true that as one gazes over 21st global scenarios, it cannot be denied that cultural aggression is real and intends to reinforce rigid separation of ethnic groups in the full force of we versus they. Take, for example, the current denounces of systematic racism in the US in the growing movement of Black Lives Matter. Another example, ISIS terrorism, the never-ending conflict between Palestinians and Israelis, the uh, dispute between Pakistanis and Indians, and many other instances of bigotry uh, that still persists nowadays. The bigotry, restricted by limiting avenues of approach to universal humanness, hate towards others and its cognate racism, are undeniably among the most harmful concepts with white currency in our contemporary societies. And, and really, when you, when you look at all these examples and you question what is really 
what separates what is understood by us versus what is understood by them, um, it, it, it boils down, it narrows down to the concept of race, quote, race. And I quote, um, and I will be quoting it um, between commas, uh, as an ongoing interrogation of, of its validity. Um, in a, in, because it is really um, in these disturbing global scenarios, the, 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 the question how to overcome and how to reconcile belonging to a nation and belonging to the world. Um, and, and that is really one of the foundation's main areas of research and innovation through its uh, partner universities. Here in Spain, um, there are three universities that are currently part of this network, Complutense University, Autonoma, and Burgos University. And as a coordinator uh, of Burgos, the contribution to, towards this question uh, from our course is being to help rupture these, quote, racial, uh, quote, unquote, frontiers um, and, and, and to highlight the crucial role that critical thinking skills play in providing an objective and a factual and a contrasted discussion around the concept of, um, quote, race, unquote, in cross-cultural conversations. Um, in, in particular, in the, in the, in the in the European context, um, since the creation of the European Higher Education Era in 2010, there's been an, a special emphasis uh, placed in the development and critical thinking skills to guarantee an exchange on objective knowledge in which hypotheses are subjected to rigorous and scientific scrutiny. And in order to comply with the European regulations and to creatively teach and assess critical thinking, Within the research group, which I am a member of, uh, SIM studies on intermediality and intercultural mediation here from the uh, Complutense University. We are currently undertaking a, a research and innovation, innovation project called Transferal Skills for Students and Early Career Researchers. And in this project, we advocate for a basic interdisciplinary definition of critical thinking skills that fueled by a mindset that always demands the facts and evidence that supports every argument. Thus, when referring to critical thinking skills um, in this talk, I am advocating for this objective argument based on factual statements, that is, contrasted opinions based on evidence and facts coming from reliable sources of information. So with this in mind, in the particular discussion of how we can surpass prejudice, bigotry, misconception about what is considered classification of human into, quote, races, unquote, I intend to use critical thinking to deconstruct these societal and scientific myths by relying on solid scientific facts with intention to unearth um, how races um, is not a scientific feasible concept to refer to uh, different populations. So the methodology um, that I will be following uh, proposes um, a brief historical summary of how it's been articulated, the concept of, quote, race, unquote, in history and in science until the discovery of the human DNA, with some references to um, what is called race studies. Historical and scientific evidence will be provided to demonstrate that th this concept, this category, is a social, has a social value, but is a social construction which has no biological or scientific evidence. So, um, in the interrogation of how we can go beyond nationality and this frontier of the concept of quote race and quote as critical thinkers, um, we always must demand the evidence that justifies and supports a claim in an objective way. So for this reason, when googling the word races, um, the first sign that should raise our eyebrows when, when googling it is that not only it is associated with more than three, 395 uh, million results, but mostly that is aligned with ethnicity and ethnic origins um, on the same grounds. Really should be suspicious because um, um, as Bernal underlines, ethnicity refers to the notion of consciousness of solidarity beyond real and fictitious kinship. 
that is based on shared symbols or images, um, a particular territory, history, religion, flag, currency, law, and by a shared language. So this means one of the truest indications of the concept of races, uh, quote, inhabits incongruency, relies on the fact that it's equated to people bounded by shared symbols and language, right? But um, in addition to this, with these images um, in this um, image search don't display at first glance is this inherent power dynamics that it's implied in the very act of classification and division of human beings into different, quote, races, unquote. As Keaton acknowledges, we must pay attention to the fact that, quote, we are all products of the history of uh, race, unquote, and uh, this is a history that simultaneously has relied and reinforces arbitrary divisions among people, granting privilege and power to a specific groups by excluding and oppressing others. Um, as um, as Kitten affirms, to expose uh, the deceitful power of, quote, race, unquote, we need to relate it to how quote, whiteness, unquote, has functioned as an oppressive, as a mythical, as an invisible norm that ranks people according to racialized and ancestry and trades and negates those, whatever their skin color, who do not conform to the standard. Keaton um, draws on James Baldwin's belief that articulated in his essay, quote, on being white and other lies, unquote, that quote, whiteness, unquote, represents a moral choice. It's not an essential biological-based identity. And as a choice, it can be actively resisted. So for, for Baldwin, the opportunity to choose entails this moral process of self-reflection and investigation on the role of whiteness, quote, and, quote, white people, unquote, have played in slavery and in the genocide of Native peoples and other forms of conquest. So um, in the application of critical thinking skills, it is important, firstly, to distinguish um, between, on one hand, what is, is, is known as, quote, racial prejudice, um, and on the other hand, what is deep-rooted systematic racism. So racial prejudice implies treating with superiority and inferiority to those who physically are different from us. Um, and actually, um, quote, racial prejudice can be observed in written records since Plato's time. Well, um, a culture of normalized and systematized racism has its historical roots in the 15th century European colonial expansion. There is so much historical and literary evidence. Um, and um, it, this has... Nowadays, that, that is really the origin of nowadays structural racism. Um, as Bernal points out, quote, in the European need to justify their inhuman behavior in the genocide, in the colonialism and the slavery inflicted upon peoples of other continents by dehumanizing them and turning them into victims, uh, their victims into devils or animals, um, this systematic racist um, system has been reinforced. On the other hand, um, it is important to remember that the concept of, quote, race, uh, unquote, does not have its origins in the 15th century, but it can be detectable in the ancient world prior to uh, 500 before Christ. The references to variety of colors of women and men are found in the Bible's Old Testament. Um, however, as Martin um, Bernal points out in, quote, Race and History, unquote, um, it did not reflect feelings of superiority or inferiority, um, but rather conveyed an aesthetic feeling. And um, to illustrate this point, Bernal refers to the Greek and Hebrew test of the Son of Sons, also known as the Son of Solomon's or Canticles, when the lover described is characterized as, quote, black and beautiful. Um, so, as we can see, it denotes an aesthetic appreciation towards blackness. 
However, this appreciation disappears around 500 before Christ, since in the Latin Vulgate translation of the same text, now in the New Testament, the lover is now depicted as, quote, black, but beautiful, unquote. So here we can see um, through this historical literary uh, revisionism and evidence that influenced by Jew, Jew, religious Judeo-Christian associations, patriarchal associations, blackness becomes the complexion and color of the evil, whereas white represents the reflection of purity and, and goodness in spirit. So the opposition between black as the association with the devil and white linked to purity and good has been argued from many different disciplines as, quote, a human universal and way into the 20th century. However, um, um, anthropologist and histori a historian um, Sir Claire Drake, for example, they have uh, has argued that even color value systems are prevalent in all cultures. They do not necessarily have the values white equals good, black equals bad. And to validate uh, his point, he bases his argument on anthropological and historical evidence that indicates that before the late Middle Ages in East Asia and in Europe, the color of white or being pale represented the color of corpses and as a result it symbolized sickness and death. And on the other side, darkness was associated with exposure to the sun and implied strength and virility. So, um, you know, the relevance of Claire uh, Dreck's critical view is that it provides historical and archaeological evidence to expose that in ancient times, such as in Egypt, for example, color or body features did not determine social or religious hierarchy. I mean, from the unification of the country uh, by the first dynasty around 300 before Christ to the next uh to uh, almost 3,000 3, years, there is no traces of discrimination or privilege, privileges that can be attributed to the color of the skin in ancient Egypt. So, from a critical point of view, it's also um, necessary to highlight that non-scientific ideas uh, with wide circulation have included the belief that human, quote, races have different origins in the past, but it had no solid contrasted evidence. However, it was widely accepted. Such is the case of the theory that relied um, on some representation, I mean, it, sorry, interpretations of the Bible in order to support the origin that, quote, the black race, unquote, descended from one of Noah's sons, Ham. You can see that in the Hebrew Bible, Genesis 10. Um, and in addition, as um, James Skin states in Biology of Race, another very popular non-scientific explanation has been the belief that human history entails transformation from brutish animality to enlightened reason, unquote. Uh, so with, you know, some, quote, races, uh, unquote, being more evolved than others. So, ironically, non-scientific racist theories um, have also uh, been spread from scientific platforms themselves, not just from non-scientific ones, as we have seen. To this means, um, it is also important to bring attention, as Bernal uh, does, to a necessary distinction between um, what is considered, quote, race in history unquote, or race, quote, in histori historiography, unquote. We need to make a distinction between race and history and reason uh, in historiography. Because even though historical and histor historiographical aspects are related, one refers to actual historical events and facts, and the other to the action of thinking and writing about history, which can easily lose objectivity and impartiality if it becomes influenced by ideology. Uh, as, as Bernal explains, 
writing uh, about places and periods in which the concept of race has been important is bound to influence one historical writings about them. From the other side, racist and ethnic histories have themselves been major factors in the emergence of racism and ethnocentrism as social and political forces. So, um, finding it necessary to revise this distinction, this reflection is crucial not to confuse, quote, racial prejudice, uh, unquote, with ethnocentric attitudes, which have existed for more than 2,000 years. Systematic racism started in the 15th century and European, um, in, in the European colonies. But the emergence of a systematic racist historiography is um, dated 200 years ago in the mid 18th century. We have to locate, um, in, as we say, 200 years ago in the mid 18th century, a context driven by a biological determinism. And that's where we find, from a critical thinking point of view, the first traces of scientific racism. Um, uh, and this is found in the argument that um, natural characteristics were to explain social and economic classes manifested in what they call different races, classes and sexes. So, um, uh, to this means, in the uh, logic of American racial categories, Paul uh, Spieber points how the existence of, quote, racial, unquote, prejudice in the past found scientific support for the first time in the work of Carolinus Linnaeus. Um, and he was the one who first classified humanity by color. Um, and um, he... Uh, also added a list of personality traits and in, in his classification and denigration of some peoples over others um, was supported by a new and emerging theory uh, that it was all circulating at that time that it was polygenism and polygenism defended that this human quote uh, races unquote had a distinctive origin in the past and even though it did have did not have any scientific evidence to justify its claim this theory helped reinforce classificatory labels of human division which were uh, to be later incorporated into the concept of the great change of beings we intended to provide a representation of all organisms on their proximity with heaven. And of course, not surprisingly, Caucasians were placed at the tops of humans as the most superior beings of all creation. And becoming the uh, spokesman of a scientific authority that it was complicit with a white supremacy view, um, Carolinus uh, News, non-scientific classification of humans in, quote, races, was greatly accepted in academic circles throughout Western colonial metropolis. And as a result, a, f uh, a few decades later, the German anthropologist, physiologist, and comparative anatomist, um, uh, Bumenhag, reinforced this notion of Carolus Linnaeus um, through a research that it was based only on the measurement of craniums of some population groups. And uh, in the uh, anthropological treatise of John Fritsch's uh, Brumman, and he defends the division of human beings into five races, what he calls the Caucasians, the Mongolians, the Malayans, Ethiopians, and Americans. Um, and as Lydia Bijan contends in, uh, quote, race and biology, unquote, Blumenbaum's division not only left many out, such as the Polynesians, Australian, Aborigines, etc., but mostly it was ultimately challenged by the interbreeding individuals, mixed individuals, which were uh, not he was not able to locate in any clear category uh, of the ones that he proposed. Um, and despite the clear flaws in his scientific base, his classification became widely accepted. And um, in 1853, Arthur de Gaminol, building on this tradition of racist science that defended white supremacy, expanded on the perfection of Caucasians and fabricated the myth of the superiority of, quote, Aran race, unquote. 
I mean, his argument went that everything that was valuable in human history has had been invented by what he called the, um, quote, white race, unquote. Um, and, um, and it's invented Aaron Branch. And according to this theory, the Aaron population had been gifted with physical and mental abilities that made them the most fitted to be the leaders of the world. And so we see how, once again, Gavinoa provided no historical or biological evidence to support his imagined Aryan population. The lack of contrasted scientific facts did not nevertheless prevent his ideas to be appropriated a century later by Hitler and the German Nazis, who would slightly modify his claim of the Aryan superiority to justify the frightful and inhuman atrocities committed against the Jews in the Second World War. So as critical thinkers um, demanding the objective evidence that justifies and supports the claims of, quote, racial uh, superiority, unquote, it must be brought to light that Carlos Linnaeus, Blumenbach, and the Govinos theories were scientifically unsustainable. Their theories of what they call races were misled by their own ethnocentric and classist views, reinforcing an already racist system of social value. And by doing so, they constructed frameworks based on the superiority of what they call whites and inferiority of what they called non-whites to justify the social advantages that occurred from white racial inheritance. And in this line, from a critical thinking standpoint and with rigorous and truthful information, um, what it can be inferred is that the classification of human beings into superior or inferior, um, quote, races, unquote, has been socially, culturally, and scientifically constructed. And so, what this brief historical revisionism has intends therefore to underline is the realization that human beings as individuals and, and as groups have acted with regard to, quote, race, quote, uh, unquote, uh, differences, much more often by um, esteemed by feelings and by prejudice than actually by knowledge. And it is precisely because it, it had no solid scientific science uh, behind. It is with rigorous knowledge that prejudice can be overcome. And this is um, also the, the, the point of this um, talk. Following the horrors of World War II, intended to proclaim a moral condemnation of racism and to expose and formulate what was scientifically known about race at that time, on the 18th of July, 1950, UNESCO issued in Paris the first of a series of declarations on the race issue. The statement titled, quote, the race question, unquote, was an important milestone because it highlighted the need to make a distinction for the very first time in history between the biological facts of race on the one hand and the existing social myth about race on the other. The document was highly criticized on several grounds. Among them, the statement number one that recognized that it was uh, at that time a sexist a statement since it did not recognize humankind as um, as uh, inclusive, um, but it referred to humankind and mankind and said, mankind is one. All men belong to the same species. So that was unprecedented statement um, to affirm that humans belong to the same species. However, um, it, since it did not have the solid signs at that time that proclaim one um, the, the definite sequence of human DNA, um, it left open the probability, as it says a little bit farther down, all men are probably derived from the very same common stock. 
that was uh, counter argued in the second point of the declaration when it says from the biological standpoint the species homo sapiens is made of a number of populations one each one of which differs from the others in frequency of one or more genes um, so as we can see um, all the science was pointing uh, but it did not have the solid argument and that 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 probability that that it was uh, left open um, really led that the document was highly criticized um, and oddly it was criticized on the grounds that um, quote freedom of scientific inquiry is imperiled when any scientific findings or opinions are elevated by an authoritative body into the position of doctrine so it was um it was revolting against this statement of being one human race as something that it was being imposed or something it was a doctrine um they they even went as far as comparing unesco to quote national socialist and notorious attempts to establish certain doctrines as the only correct conclusions to be drawn from research on race um, and their suppression of any contrary op opinion. So, as we can see, this visceral reaction from the scientific community in the 1950s may well have been an indicative of these prevailing racist views that were colliding with the biological discoveries available at that time, which still were not sufficient to alleviate this controversy. Um, and so, as a result, UNESCO issued um, another statement in the following um, year um, and in the explanation of this second document, um, this well, it was called the Statement on the Nature of Race and Race Differences, it also issued in Paris, but this time in June 1951. Uh, and so, um, as I said, as I was saying, in the explanation of this second document, on behalf of the scientific committee, the rapporteur Leslie Dune explains that they were careful to avoid saying uh, that because races were all variable and many of them graded into each other, therefore races did not exist. So, as we can see, as a result of the limitations of their knowledge, scientists in the 1950s were affirming that humans could be divided into different, quote, races, unquote. And it was recognized, however, that racial inequality stemmed from ignorance and prejudice and that it was indeed an ominous voice uh, in agreeing that there were no scientific grounds for any ra racist position regarding purity uh, or hierarchy of inferiority and superiority of races. So that is the good thing, um, you know, that once the scrutiny of science firmly made a stand that biological differences cannot justify racism, um, even though the controversy is still, right? Like, um, uh, yeah, we are one human race, but there are different races. Uh, however, as I said, this uh, firmly um, consensual um, denouncing of um, using biology to justify racism, they open the, the road for um, historical declaration and an unprecedented declaration of human rights, which was signed in 20th November 1963 by Charter of the United Nations. And it defends, quote, dignity um, and equality to uh, all human beings in the first article. Um, and while it is true that it's grounded in a vision of universal humanity, I also would like to provide critical thinking into the declaration because, ironically, it does nonetheless articulate an implicit classification of humans in races when in the second article it states that the declaration of human rights are entitled, quote, without discrimination of any kind in any particular as to race, sex, language or religion. So there is a contradiction of declaring that we are one human race and then uh, preventing um, discrimination on the basis of race. Um, the contradiction of agreeing that we are all human beings while discursively articulating no distinction based on race unquote, really prompts a critical thinking mindset to wonder if the lack of irrefutable scientific evidence has really harbor thoughts 
so in variance with the mission of the uh, declaration. The great breakthrough in science came in 1972 when Richard C. Lewontin in, quote, the apportionment of human diversity, unquote, confirms that the largest amount of generic variation exists within, not between the so-called races. Finally, science proves that um, ethnic groups as a social category is a more biological accurate naming um, rather than, quote, racial groups. The same year, his findings were corroborated and extended by research on nuclear DNA polyformism conducted by uh, Masatoshi Nei and Arun Rocholderhuri in, quote, gene differences between Caucasian, Negro, and Japanese populations, unquote. Nei and Rocholderhuri demonstrate that the genetical differences between Africans, Asians, and Europeans is actually smaller than the difference that can be found in each group. 20 years later, uh, on October 1st, 1990, an international team of researchers set the goal to sequence the map and map all the genes of our species, Homo sapiens, launching the unprecedented human genomic project. Two years later, Stephen Muller published Human Variation, in which the most visible traits of human variation, meaning color of the eyes, hair, and skill color, are explained as, quote, the variable generic response to variable environments is strongly influenced and determined by the amount of exposure to sunlight and climate conditions, unquote. So what it followed was a historic affirmation in a scientific journal, um, the Milwaukee Journal in 1995, that said, quote, race has no scientific basis in biology, unquote. And as a consequence, quote, race is a result of human tendency to categorize, but has no biological basis, unquote. Indeed, this racist tendency to categorize and, um, was and classify was finally confronted with groundbreaking science in 2003, when an accurate and complete human genomic sequence was finally finished by the Human Genomic Project, supporting 42 contrasted human ethnicities and collapsing any possible biological classification based on, quote, races. So what these scientific facts demonstrate is that the physical variation, which seems so apparent to us, is not very significant from a biological point of view. And this realization is crucial to bring awareness to the fact that claims of superiority and inferiority come from societal costume rather than biological assessment. And that this concept of categories of, quote, races, unquote, have been artificially constructed to serve those in power, to justify exploitation, subjugation, and slavery of, of minds. Um, I would like at this point to share with you how this um, DNA technology nowadays facilitates us to unearth um, and to discover um, the complex mixture of ethnicities that make up our own human ancestries. Uh, nowadays there are many, um, many databases and human DNA fabric um, technology and uh, available to the general public through research institutes um, is basically um, trying to find the, the this um, ancestry in our DNA they follow the maternal inheritance that it's um, um, esteemed in the mitochondrial DNA in this illustration, for example, you can see how the nuclear DNA of the fertilized egg uh, is provided equally by both parents, uh, but the uh, mitochondria is the maternal de derivation. And uh, well, as I say, I would like to uh, share with you my own discovery into trying to 
provide an embodiment of this discourse over ethnicity and social construction of, quote, race, unquote. Um, so I recently undertook a DNA test myself. And, well, um, being born in the north of Spain um, and um, having uh, most of my, my family trees come from Europe and immigration um, to the United States, but mostly European descendant, I was very, very uh, surprised um, to find out that um, those who still reinforce in me the constructed category of white, as they call myself, um, they science demonstrates that this category is completely untainable. So, well, this is my uh, ethnicity estimate, uh, and as you can see, uh, my ancestors um, came from South Europe, because I'm 46.9% um, Iberian, but I'm 90% Italian. Um, but they also come from North and West Europe, since I am 30% uh, and a half Irish, his, his Scottish and Welsh um, uh, descendants, um, and also from North and West European um, uh, air regions, um, also 13%. Uh, um, what I did not know is that my ancestors also came from North Africa, um, um, four and four point seven percent um, of my ancestors came from Africa. I also have one percent of my ancestry from Nigeria. I also didn't know that my ancestors came from the Middle East. I'm two uh, two point two percent um, Middle East descendant, and I also didn't know that my ancestors also came from Central and South America, from Mesoamerican. Um, so as you can see, the DNA technology nowadays enables us to deconstruct um, the category of white, the category of being different races. Um, and um, with, with this in mind, uh, from a critical thinking standpoint, uh, it can be affirmed that really the uh, failure to recognize the tremendous impact of environment upon the complex, complex generic background of human variation has led not only to poor science, um, but also in the past to uh, very racist science. Um, and luckily with uh, 20, 21st century science in hand, uh, we can nowadays objectively discuss that the concept of uh, this constructed concept of races has been socially made up and has been reinforced, um, driven a division of human beings um, that is scientifically unsustainable. Another reason for the relevance of the discovery in genetics lies on the fact that now we can objectively explain and discuss how these views about race purity are wrong and why social and political views of race inequality have been um, aggrieving and most but mostly and more, more strikingly it showcases the realization that the likeness among human beings are far greater than their differences and that is both a scientific and a humanistic issue. Indeed in the formulation of the deepest questions in the humanities that is who are we as individuals, as a society, as a global community? Um, science, as never before in history, really holds the key to help humanists unfold these answers. Um, so, well, um, as we have seen for centuries, although scientific and mass no rigorous or truthful data, the belief of human hierarchy, of human races and classes, was used to justify division, classification, superiority, exploitation. Nowadays, on the contrary, the field of genetics, among others, claims forcefully that the concept of races is unjustifiable and it does not have a sound discriminatory anchor. However, um, uh, looking at nowadays as scenarios, um, we still um, see how the category of race um, is still very, um, very uh, strong in the way we identify as individuals, as a society, as a community. 
um, um, and well, this idea that we need to start deconstructing race as a biological phenomenon um, and uh, highlight that it's a social phenomenon that has been trans transmitted by culture into biological one. So while wrapping up this talk today, um, I would like to highlight that, well, from a critical thinking standpoint, it can be affirmed that, quote, as I was saying before, that the failure to recognize the tremendous impact on environment upon the complex generic background of human variation has led in the past not only to poor science, but to a very racist science. Um, in order to be able to go beyond nationality and become international citizens, we find it an imperative as professors, as uh, coordinators of Eurasia Foundation and beyond, we find it an imperative to interrogate what grounds racism and what is still fueling this false, false belief that, quote, race, unquote, is a biological phenomenon. Um, Thus, really, in the articulation of inclusive cross-cultural dialogues, uh, this research has not only pursued a brief examination of how the concept of race has been socially and scientifically constructed throughout history, but mostly it has intended to help to objectively demonstrate that what unites us is so much more and greater than what separates us. So with this last thought, this concluding thought uh, going not just in Eurasia community, but, but beyond um, the need that to promote critical and informed discussions uh, in which sciences and humanities bring about the best of cross fertilization and join forces in the celebration of one human race. It's been really a pleasure um, and a true honor to be with you today and to discuss this important critical thinking approach to uh, the theory of uh, race studies, um, ethnic studies, uh, identity studies, uh, literary studies, and intercultural dialogues. How we can transcend this divisive um, and 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 very racist category uh, of classification of humans into different races in cross-cultural dialogues. If you have any questions or doubts, feel free to um, um, email, um, email me or send your questions uh, and comments to Professor Asuncio Lopez Reda and she will get them to me and I will respond to you. So thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for your time, for listening. It's been a, a great pleasure sharing this topic with you. My best wishes. Um, and best regards. Thank you.